Well, hi, and welcome to my shop here this afternoon. I got some more ideas that I wanted to try on the uh, tube tester here. So starting with a different tube from the 50L6. Okay, I've rummaged high and low for a 6L6 tube. I, I really don't have one anywhere, I'm sure of it. So, but I did find uh, a bunch of 6F6s. There's a 6V6. I didn't know these even came in steel tubes, so I believe, if I got the story right, the 6F6 is the precursor to the 6L6. And these are all number 41s, in fact. Uh, even though the shape and the numbers change, the I, I guess the operating factors for these things don't change a lot, or, you know, I don't <laughs> I don't really know the history of tubes. I have tried to learn it. It is so complicated. So I've tested I have two of them. Number two and number one. I've tested these in my Stark tester and I've written down the GM reading. It's quite different. It's 2000 on this one. It's 1200 on this one. Because I haven't worked hard on the Stark tester, I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm foolish enough to believe those numbers. <laughs> but obviously one tube is way different than the other. So I'm going to test both these tubes for GM in here. And, you know, we'll be able to compare the GM reading. Uh, and uh, that should just add even more concern. 6F6, even more. Oh, I don't think I'm going to make it here on the roll chart. 6F6, one second here. I've got it on a, I've got it right here. 6F6, so, 6F6, so 6.3. Oh, yeah, down from 50. It's good to get in the habit of turning the filament control back to zero every time you're finished with your tube tester. Uh, he says, telling himself, 6 GGG. 6 GGG. Uh, that's not the same as uh, C GGG 6L6. B GGG. Okay, well, it's a little bit different, but I'm not going to worry about it. C just putting a different plate shunt in there. C. I'm comparing this to the 6L6. G. Or GM test. GG. And G again. This control doesn't matter. 26431. 26431. It's exactly the same as the 6L6, which is uh, what I'm trying to get to here. 05200. 05200. Very same. The only difference so far has been this uh, plate shunt. The uh, bias is 1.7 for this tube, is 1.4 for the other tube. Uh, the big difference, if I look in the tube manual, is the uh, quiescent current flowing through the tube. It's about double for a 6L6 than a, a 6F6. But I think we're all set here. And we'll do number one. Of course, these tubes don't have shorts in them because they, I tested them in my other tube tester. Oh, is this thing really ready to go? <laughs> Line off, bias down a bit for some some reason. Let's see, six point three. I think we're ready. Okay, everything looks pretty normal. meter here. That's the line setting. It's a touch high. Uh, bias setting. 1.7. That's pretty much where it is right now. 1.7. So I'm going to put this back on line. Flip this guy into test and hold. Set the line. Set the bias. See, the bias has gone way up now from where it was. Way up. So yeah, it's a mystery. You set this. I have to. I have to look more closely. You set this with the tube in test mode or not? Okay. I put this in test. Now we're going to read the GM. It was two thousand on the other 
on the other. So we're on the 8K scale. So 2000 would be right about, I guess it would be the 2 right there. <laughs> we're on the we're on the 8k scale 8k scale yeah well, so it's close to two it's two it's two and a half i'm just going to wiggle the bias a touch to see how sensitive it is well that's not bad okay so that's very similar to the other the other tester the other okay we'll pull this out we'll put in this one and see if it comes out around 1200 If it comes out a little higher, like the last one, it would be 1300. Checking the line. Put it into test mode. Okay, line's still a touch high. Oop, wrong control. There, I did it again. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's so close. Okay, bias 1.7. That's exactly where it was 1.7. Test mode, test, 1300. So we're on the eight scale, so that would be about 1500. Yeah, okay, so proportionally speaking, both testers are working the same. Uh, in terms of quantitative amounts, hey, that's pretty close. That's not too bad. Okay, so we're gonna leave this tube in here. No, I want the uh, better tube, I want the uh, better one. 6F6, eh? And now we're going to try to carry on the uh, calibration procedures with the 6F6 in there. Uh, it take me a few minutes to get this uh, set up, so I'll, I'll set it up off camera here. Okay, so I've uh, set this up now to do the EM test. Uh, those out of there for now. And test. Uh, to set the bias to 24 volts, and then the test will be valid. Switch it on. Okay, I'll do the short test. Oh, I don't know which pins have the shorts on them. Ah, let's risk it. Test, test, famous last words, let's risk it. 50 on the meter scale there. Line, a little high, bias. Okay, bias has to go up to 50. Uh-oh, uh-oh, where's the bias? Hey, what's happened? Okay, another little lesson learned. So, uh, when you're setting the bias control in EM mode, you set it according to this scale, not according to the any reading on the meter. So, it's supposed to be set to 24, uh, but this will be this way, but I want to go this way. This is zero now, so 24 would be about there. Not much difference here or there, actually. 24. So, put it on 24. This is basically controlling the meter's position, good and bad. I believe that's what you're really calibrating here when you do this. So I think, I think we're ready. Good, and you see it went right up to the sticky spot. So this guy tests good. Out he comes. I'm gonna put in the 1200 one. Now this one should test bad. Just to double check, my other tube tester tells me that uh, 1260 is the lowest passable reading for GM on a tube like this. And this one I got 1200 on it. So it's, it's right on the edge. So if all that's true, then this should come up right in the middle. Oh, no, it clearly comes up in the replace. So that's, that's absolutely valid. This is not a good tube to use. And this other one was much better. So I'm going to go back to the better one. Let's shut this off. And now I'm going to set up for the EM calibration 
using this 6F62. And we'll see. We'll see if I can get away with it this time. I'm going to get stuck again. Okay, I, I think I'm all set here. Switch it on. Adjust the bias to, to get 20 milliamps flowing here. And then I reach under and adjust a potentiometer to get to get what? To get what? To get what? To get uh, uh, a reading of three on the 10 volt scale. A reading of three. So a 10 volt bias scale. So three would be somewhere around there. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So we switch on. I think we should see a current here right away. Okay, I'll put it in test mode and we'll see if a current shows up here. I'm going to turn the bias, leave it right where it is. Test. There's still no current flow. I got these correct. tube tester can't even know that this isn't a 6L6 at this point. The settings are all exactly the same as if it was a 6L6 in there. So there's something up here. Unless this is not supposed to be on test. I'm going to read over the instructions again. See what I can see. What am I doing wrong here? Okay, let's try this again. I think there's a chance this should be in the bias position. So go bias. Put this on. Ah. Now I get I get EM readings when I perform the test the way you're supposed to do it in order to perform the proper test. This calibration step is not working. Why would it not work? Boy oh boy oh boy. So a part of the doing the EM test is to adjust this uh, variable resistor right here. I believe. Yep, number eleven. Maybe this is open circuited. And uh, I think everything is going through it. Let's find out. Now it's hooked up to the circuit, but uh, well, this isn't going to work, is it? <laughs> Let's try that. Ah, wow, that's awfully low. Well, this could be turned all the way to one extreme. Close. Let's turn it the other way here. 20. Is that all? It's like a 0 to 20 ohms. Uh, here's another one here. But I mean, these are all hooked up, right? So who knows what I'm testing across here, really. Hmm. About 3,000, 4,000. This looks identical to this, but that doesn't mean anything, does it?
Well, I'm going to try to find this on the schematic. I, I'm not hopeful it'll show a value. Come on, look with me. Okay, so we're looking for a fairly simple potentiometer related to the EM adjustment. Oh boy. First, we got to figure out which... Oh, it's potentiometer number 11. It's P11. P11. There it is. P11. Showing, uh, look, 30. 30 ohms. That's what it is. P10. Right off of it. Is that so? Well, it wouldn't look that way from the wires, but then uh, I can't really see. P10. P11. Well, if there's something wrong with P10, that might upset things. Let's uh, put this through its range and measure it. And then we'll, we'll hunt down P10 and try to verify this thing. So I'm going to move the, this guy right through its range. Extreme. There's the other extreme. So yeah, it's about 30. Can't see there's anything wrong with that. Now the next one was P P was it P11? P10 it was P10. This was P11. P10. Hey, where is it? P10. P10 must be down on here somewhere. P10. Uh, oh, P10. P10. 10, 10 is the uh, is all the switches. All the switches on the front. So what they're talking about is the uh, the EM uh, pot. That's this. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at that. So it says right on at 100. So these are the outside with it in circuit, of course. 35. This is a slider to one end, and a slider to the other end. 38, and then Take the whole thing again. So how does that happen? How do you get 35 on the whole wire wound part? And you get a higher reading on part of it. Pretty mysterious things. Kind of suggest the uh, I should spray some WD-40 in it. What do you think of that? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. I really have no reason to think this is not working properly. So I, I'm, I'm just lost here. I don't. I'm lost. I don't know. I don't know why it's not working. Wow! I got to really dig down, down in the well of ideas to come up with something now. Even though I've shown that the EM test kind of works, it's just a good bad thing. Now we can just take a look at how loose this is here. So now that that's on purpose. Terrible arrangement, eh? There's nothing here stopping the paper from jamming into the gears. The yeah, paper was taped together with scotch tape. The scotch tape has, of course, not got a long life. Luckily, I think for just about every tube tester, you can find these uh, on the internet, these uh, charts. Besides, uh, almost all these are going to come out with the chart that was in it when it was manufactured, and then supplementary charts, which you almost never have. Uh, 
uh, when you, if you were to buy one of these, almost never is a supplementary chart coming with it. But it's all on the internet. Okay, I gotta quit again. I really thought I was gonna get it this time. See you on the next video.